Hello and welcome back to the Turbo Newscast. Uh, we're on part two. Usually the uh, part two. Just the Apple lawsuits section. This week, however, it's surprisingly Google focused. There's six stories this week about Google, and only two yeah. of them about Apple. Um, now, there's another Google story that also involves Apple. But for the most part, yeah, it's mostly Google, not Apple. But we're going to start That's out with the, Apple, with the Apple stories, just so we don't disappoint you. <laughs> we're yeah, actually yeah. going to start out with, uh, with a story that did make it on what the fuck is wrong with you, but I decided, you know what, fuck it, I'm going to put it on this, uh, in this part too. Australian police have warned against using Apple Maps. Potentially life-threatening issue. Yes, Victoria Police have said that Apple's inaccuracies are a potentially life-threatening issue. Um, uh, specifically, Apple's Maps application has uh, directed many tourists to the middle of uh, the desert. Where there's no you're, water. You're pretty much better to just have an old-fashioned map with you in front of your face while you're driving with your feet. Yeah, bring a Thomas guide. You'll do better. Because remember, it's Australia. <laughs> Everything wants to kill you. Yeah, everything that's not <laughs> human. Even lost, some of the humans want to kill you. If you get lost in Australia, you're it's boned! Over. <laughs> <laughs> you are well and truly boned! <laughs> truly boned. Um, the Maps application and, uh, directs uh, motorists to semi-arid national park where uh, temperatures can reach 46 degrees Celsius. And there's no water supply. Um, now, those drivers who were who managed to get there were actually trying to get to the town of Mildura, Victoria. Um, and instead, they're getting stranded in Murray Sunset National Park, um, which is about 70 kilometers to the northeast. Which is a pretty big distance, actually. Well, it's not as bad as that one time we were in Norway. Well, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, 70 kilometers is about, uh, if I remember right, it's like 40, 50 miles. So, you know what? Even if they get rid of this map, of Apple map, they still need to have it somewhere on the internet just so I can find out where, I'm, where I am, according to them. Uh huh. <laughs> so I can be like, hey, what's Locations going on? According to Apple. <laughs> <laughs> See, I would come and talk to you, but I'm apparently in England. That's my You're excuse. In California. Right How'd you get to England? Because Apple. Because Apple. <laughs> hey, sweet. I wasn't all that far off. You weren't? Yeah, I said about 40 to 50 miles. Turns out it's about 43 miles. Lucky You're enough. so good. And uh, those of you who don't want to do the conversion, 46 Celsius is about like 116 degrees Fahrenheit. So it's, it's, it's balls hot. hot. <laughs> it's like Death Valley hot. But not world record setting hot. It's like just throw yourself in an oven and be done with it hot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but while Australian police are blaming it all on Apple, you kind of have to stop and think. At least part of this is uh, is uh, pebcac. Problem exists between keyboard and uh, computer because. While, yes, the program is wrong, I would expect the person driving to be able to notice, at least when your cell phone re uh, reception starts to die out, or when you start seeing the signs that say, don't rely solely on your fucking GPS. 
You know, it would be kind of you, you. You would think you would think that if you were entering a national park, there would be some kind of sign that said, "Hey, you're in a national park for a huge desert right now." Well, you never know. Maybe it, uh, um, one of the routes does have you passing through, um, Murray, uh, Murray, whatever national park. But. Uh, I've never been to Australia. I don't know how different Australian national parks are compared to American national parks. They might just be like a gate with like a crayon scribbled piece of paper taped on it sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> I think so much of them. You would think that there would be signs somewhere saying, you know, you're here right now. Yeah, welcome to Murray Sunset National Park. That's not where I wanted to be. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe. I I I would assume that when you're in a desert, you would think that, hey, I'm not in a town right now. I'm probably in the wrong place. You know, I just realized this should have been the second story because this actually opens up a perfect segue to the third story, which I kind of want to just jump to right now. We can jump back if you want. Yeah, you know what? I'm just going to jump to it. Luckily, okay. um, users who... uh who find themselves solely dependent on Apple Maps have found a have found solace in the fact that Google Maps has finally released. Now I know that title says Google is set to release iOS Maps app, but tonight was yesterday. Google's Map app is actually out now and it, uh, and tomorrow yeah, it is, is the today is, not yesterday. Tomorrow is today and therefore yesterday it was the day before. Yes. Um, so, now, however, it's not going to be the default app unless you jailbreak your phone. Which I am very tempted, but I wouldn't. Um, yet. Yet. But, uh, yeah, it, Google has released a Maps application. Or has released Google Maps. Does it work? Uh, it works very well. It um now I don't I mean, hope know, so. I don't know how it compares to um the old iOS five Google Maps that was integrated. I don't know how it compares to that. But still, they have a maps app. That's better than maps nothing. App. That's better than nothing, and it's much better than Apple Maps. <laughs> <laughs> having nothing is better than having Apple Maps. <laughs> but what else is also apparently better than the Apple default application is WhatsApp. Um, WhatsApp is a... Uh, it's a messaging application, if you couldn't uh, get the pun in the title, what's app instead of what's up. Yeah. Screw this writer. It's kind of horrible. No, that's actually the name of the app. Screw this app. <laughs> um, now, Apple uh, released uh, data points that uh, about 300 billion iMessages had been sent since, uh, since iMessage debuted in autumn of 2011. Which is an impressive number. It's 300 They're billion all by messages. my sister. They're all by my sister. <laughs> but, um, Would you be surprised? No, no, I really wouldn't. <laughs> but uh, in August of this year, WhatsApp announced they're handling 10 billion messages a day, equating to roughly 300 billion messages every month. So they're making the equivalent of iMessage's entire career in one month, message-wise. So um, it's getting pretty big then. Yeah, they've been at 1 billion since uh, October 2011, which is right around when iMessage launched. But, yeah, I must say I'm kind of impressed. It's in... It's the only markets where it's even struggling is uh, China, South Korea, and Japan. But really, are you that surprised? What do you there? expect there? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and 
the cool part about it, and the only reason I bring it up, is because it's just, WhatsApp is just a, it's a small startup. It's 30 people behind it. As opposed to Apple. As opposed to which Apple. Which is fucking Apple. Which is, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. They got so many lawyers, they just toss them aside when they're done. Speaking of companies being fucking companies, Google has launched drones. Now to start that, start off, they've only launched them in Africa. And you think, first off, they're being racist and they're launching drones? Oh, what the hell? What the hell, Google? And What's then you read, Google? it's to stop poachers. And then you're like, what the hell? No, I can't be pissed off at you again. <laughs> stop doing awful things for good reasons. How does this stop poachers? Um, basically, what it is, is you have an aerial survey system, so you're kind of, you're watching over the rhinos... So if someone shoots them, you can kind of tell, oh, hey, look, there's the guy who shot them. And then you gun them down with the drone? Yes, you gun them down with all the missiles and shit that's loaded on the uh, <laughs> UAV. <laughs> and then you blow the area to smithereens. Yes. <laughs> you see one guy shoot one rhino, and then you blow the shit out of everything. <laughs> That'll teach that one guy. Yes. <laughs> That'll I'm sure the World Wildlife Fund would be so happy with that. <laughs> uh, uh, that would have made this so much better. I agree. And so much worse at the same time. <laughs> well, there is only really one way to say America. America. Massive Blowing shit up. explosions. <laughs> Blowing shit up. By that logic, Michael Bay is the most American American ever. Oh, God. I gotta get out of here faster. <laughs> oh. Can't get out of here fast enough, Cliff. Of course, there's really two things we're good at. Gigantic explosions and... And one thing that Google's getting worse at. Porn. In fact, Google has tweaked their image search just to make porn harder to find, and I, I love, I have to love this image. Porn, 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 porn. Do you think that the 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 writer of that did that? I really want to, but it wasn't because they credit someone else. Oh. I mean, really, how hard is it to just go to Google, type in porn, 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 You know, porn. he probably saw the picture and just thought this is the greatest thing ever. Yeah. And just give, let me give credit to that person. Yeah. Um. So credit to you, Chris. But yeah, um, if basically they're trying to not show porn. Unless you're specifically looking for porn. Um, so basically, you're going to have a lot more trouble finding porn unless you pretty much append the word porn to the end of your search. Of course, uh, you could always go to Bing. It's true. Just for, uh, just for porn. Google still is the best search engine for uh, searching. For non-porn. Bing turns out to be the best one for image searching porn. That's bizarre. Yeah. <laughs> like now we're comparing the search engines based on their porn content. Yeah. I feel Although I don't know why you're searching images when streaming media is a thing that exists. There are very some much. people who still live Back in 2000, who could only get pictures. Yeah. And, and they like loaded like this. I still have that on my iPod. <laughs> <laughs> I That's hate kind of hilarious. that. Because you have 
massive GIFs that kind of do the GIF version of that. They load, like, the first 15 frames, and they run it fine, and then it starts loading slower and slower and slower and slower, and eventually you get, like, a half a frame a second by the end of the GIF, and it's, like, it's taking you about three times as long as the GIF actually is to watch it. <laughs> What's the point? Exactly. Then I just whip out my laptop, you know what, fuck it. Look at right, that I'll GIF. Think, I'll think last time I start up this laptop, then I will just see this GIF. Mm-hmm. Yeah, oh. that's actually true sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, unfortunately, that's not a fault of the internet. That's a fault of the uh, iPod hardware. <laughs> oh. All Apple's fault. But speaking of the internet, Eric Schmidt had sa has said that Google Fiber is not just an experiment and that Google is actually trying to decide where to expand to next. Dude, come here and go to Cliff. I know. That's all you need to know. Yeah, he said, uh, of course, he ha he unfortunately wasn't that much specific, that much specific, or that, that much, much English. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it sounds like uh, the chances of those who don't live in one Kansas City or the other uh, might have just gotten a little bit better. Ooh. Yeah, and uh, Netflix has even uh, Netflix has even ranked uh, Google as their top uh, ISP. Ooh. Their top uh, what is it? Consistent ISP. Um, the average speed for Netflix Netflix streams is two point five five megabit uh, megabits per second. Keep in mind that does include, I believe, all of the people who signed up for the free internet version of Google Fiber, um, which I can't remember what the speed is because I'm terrible at this. Um, More than mine still. Yeah. It's, uh, it's fast. And keep in mind it also is limited by Netflix itself. Because if... Um, if I remember right, and from uh, from what I've heard, Netflix only really offers a cap of 3.55 megabits per second streaming. So. That's not awful. It's not awful, no. And Google Fiber comes the closest. That's HD. Yeah, it comes the closest that uh, all of them have come to matching that, pretty much. Watch, it's going to come here when I leave. When I'm, like, in England and there forever, it's going to come here. Uh-huh. I'm going to be like, fuck. Though by that time, I'll probably be all of England, too, so who knows. Just give us more internet. In case you're wondering, the lowest one on the list, number 21, is uh, AT&T Mobile with 0. .48 megabits per second. Oh, my God. Just because God. I know someone was wondering. <laughs> because come you. on, you can't have a ISP ranking list without wondering. Well, who's at the bottom? <laughs> Did you just, need to just say above that with point five six? AT and T is awful. Keep in mind that is their mobile service. AT and T's Uverse is number eleven with one point nine four megabits per second. Much more respectable. All right. All right, whatever. Yeah. Shall we continue? But uh, all of this good news about Google Fiber, all of this want. Yeah, give it now. Well, they would love to give it now. Unfortunately, it would kind of cost almost more money than exists in the world to give it now. Oh. Uh -huh. Google Fiber to expand to all of the United States would cost $100 billion. That's a lot of zeros. Well, that includes everyone, right? Yes, that's um everyone. That, that that's including like the people who live in the country. Yeah. Who that would take a boatload of money just to get it to them. Now, this figure is, of course, um according to Goldman Sachs, um, who also estimate that uh, 
Even a 50 million household build-out, which would represent less than half of all of the United States homes, would cost up to $70 billion, meaning they'd have to take out a major loan just to get fiber to most major markets, including New York, uh, Los Angeles, uh, Miami, you know, the big. The big places. ones. So... Yeah, we're not going to see it countrywide anytime soon, unless everyone just goes nuts about Google Fiber and decides, you know what, Google? Unless the government's like, all holy of my money, crap, have it. we will give you all of it. <laughs> That's what they should do. They should just have, like, they should just give all the extra money in the military to Google, <laughs> and then they can. <laughs> yeah, fuck give NASA, the fuck it. the military, Google. Yeah, to Google. <laughs> They'll they'll be all over space too, so it won't matter. Yeah, giving it to Google might as well just be. It might as well just be giving it to NASA. <laughs> and maybe then Google will create robots to defend us in case anything happens. So there you go. It's just Google everywhere. Yeah, Google can just supervise us with uh, UAVs. Yeah, it's our new overlords. I for one welcome our new Google overlords. We've already said that. <laughs> Multiple times. I'm still we'll welcoming them. It. Yeah. <laughs> You're still welcome to come, Google. We're still here. All right. That's uh, that's all for part two of section one. We'll be right back with uh, part three. Indeed. Stay tuned. <laughs>